How many of you, this is your first retreat here at Divine Retreat Center? Wow, that's a lot. Once again, first retreat at the Divine Retreat Center. It's your first? Wonderful, wonderful. The topic for this afternoon is surrender. So this session is to help you to reflect what are the areas in your life that you need to surrender to the Lord. And in order for, to help you to reflect, I want to share with you a story in the Bible. I want to share a story with you, and I want you to reflect on this story. Even as you reflect later, you talk about this. Go back and talk, discuss about this story. It's from the book of Genesis. Genesis in chapter 35. It's a story of a man by the name of Jacob. Say Jacob. His twin brother was Esau. Esau. Both Jacob and Esau were the sons of Isaac. And the Bible tells an amazing story about how God asks Jacob to go to battle in, Jake, in Genesis chapter 35, verse 1. God says to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and settle there, and there make an altar to the Lord God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. You see, Jacob was running away from his brother. Jacob was running away from his brother because Jacob had stolen the birthright of his brother Esau. Jacob had stolen the blessing from Esau. So Jacob was running away. And while he was running away, at one night, he was asleep, and God appeared to Jacob in the sleep. And in the sleep, Jacob saw a ladder going up to heaven, the stairway to heaven. And on the ladder, there were angels going up and down the ladder. And in the morning, when Jacob woke up, Jacob realized that this was a place of encounter with God a place where God was very close to Jacob. And in this place, Jacob called it Bethel. Say Bethel. Bethel is the name of the place. So after a few years, Jacob forgot about this experience in Bethel. Jacob went far away from God. He got married. He got married to the girl that he loved. And after getting married to the girl that he loved, his life was far, far from God. And everything in Jacob's life was going wrong. And at this point, when everything was going wrong in Jacob's life, God appeared to Jacob again and said to Jacob, Arise, go back to Bethel. What is Bethel? Bethel is that place where you can experience God. Bethel is the place where you can experience the love of God. Bethel is the place where you can experience the mercy of God. And God gives specific instructions to Jacob. God doesn't scold Jacob. God is not angry with Jacob. God is inviting Jacob to come back. Tell the person sitting next to you, it's time. To come back. Tell the person sitting next to you. <laughs> come back where? Come back to Bethel. Bethel, the word Bethel, the name Bethel, Beth means house. El means God. Bethel means house of God. Bethel, Beth means house. El means God. Bethel means house of God. So it's time to come back to the house of God. God is telling you he wants to restore your life. And what to do in Bethel? Make an altar there in Bethel to God. Means that you need to surrender. You need to let go. You need to give all the burdens that you're carrying, the pain that you're carrying. You see, friends, God plan for you to come here you are not here by mistake 
God brought you here for a reason. Say amen. God brought you so that you can experience his love. Just like Jacob, you have been lost. You are living in a world where you have been far, far from God. You have forgotten about God. You have not a relationship with God anymore. And everything was going wrong in your life. And God invited you to come for the National Youth Retreat. Why? So that he can bring you back to Bethel. But nothing will happen here. Nothing will happen at Divine Retreat Center if you do not start by making an altar here before God. Say altar. Altar means place of sacrifice. That's the meaning of altar. And in the altar, Jacob was to put away all the foreign gods, purify himself, and change his clothes. Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35 verse 2. Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods. Put away the things that had, you have made into a god. Maybe before coming here, cigarette was your god. Maybe before coming here, alcohol was your god. Maybe before coming here, pornography was your god. But now, you need to come to Bethel, make an altar and sacrifice and let go. Say let go. Let go of that pornography. Let go of that wrong relationship. Maybe girls, you are in a relationship with a boy and the boy is constantly asking you for a sexual relationship. Maybe it's time to let go of that boy. But you have great difficulty to let go because you love him so much, but you know that relationship is leading you to a wrong place. This is the time to come before God, friends. You are not here by mistake. Brothers, maybe you are here because there is an addiction in your life, an addiction to sin, an addiction to masturbation, an addiction to pornography, an addiction to drugs, and you cannot set yourself free. God is inviting you to come here for the next few days. Divine Retreat Center will be your battle. The place of the house of God. And in this house of God, you need to put, make an altar. And in that altar, you need to sacrifice all the foreign gods that are among you. You need to purify yourself. You need to change your clothes. Tell the person sitting next to you, change your clothes. Don't take out your shirt, huh, guys? That's not what I mean. Change your clothes means that you need to change your life. Tell the person sitting next to you, change your life. What do you need to do? I can't hear you. You need to change your life. Friend, you're asking yourself, why are you here? Maybe you are here because your parents forced you to come. Your parents didn't force you to come, friends. Jesus said very clearly, no man can come to me unless the Father draws him. If you are here, it's because God brought you here, not because your parents forced you to come. But you know something? God can bring you to this house of God. But God cannot make you to let go of these things that you have held on to in your life. Until and unless you choose to let go. That is why Jacob says to his household, put away the foreign gods. Purify yourself. Change your clothes. Come, let us go up to Bethel. And there I will make an altar to God. There I will make an altar to God. Friends, you are tired, carrying so much of pain and burden. Maybe you are here and your heart is filled with anger, with hatred, 
with unforgiveness for all the persons in your life who has hurt you. You are carrying all this rubbish in your life. It's time to let go. You don't need this anymore. You need to let it go to God. You need to give it to God. You need to go up to God, make an altar there, and in the altar, you need to sacrifice. I told you that Bethel means the house of God. Beth is house, El is God. So two things God is inviting you. God brought you to Divine Retreat Center, but he cannot force you to let go. You let go out of your own free will. You let go out of your own free choice. But when you let go, God promises he will change your life. For the next few days, Divine Retreat Center, this Bethel will be the place of the presence of God, the place of the promise of God, the place of the protection of God, the place of the provision of God, the place of the power of God, the place of the purpose of God. But all this cannot happen in your life. If you do not let go, let go of that cigarette, let go of that addiction to drugs, let go of that alcohol, let go of that hatred, that unforgiveness, let go of the depression. Friend, maybe you are here and you are suffering with so much of suicidal thoughts. Friend, in this battle, Offer these suicidal thoughts to God. Don't become like Jacob. Jacob forgot, forgot God in his life. Jacob forgot the call of God in his life. He forgot his vow. He forgot that first time he encountered God in Bethel. He forgot his vow. He decided to settle in a town called Sekim. And in that town, his priorities was to fall in love, get married. He fell in love with Rachel. And when he was far from God, tragedy came. His daughter Dinah was raped. The Canaanites were slaughtered. People died. And when there was a problem, God Call Jacob to come back. Come back to Bethel, friend. This next few days of the retreat is not because your parents forced you to come. This next few days of retreat is because God is inviting you to come back. He's asking you, let me show my love to you once again. Let me show my forgiveness to you once again. Maybe, friend, you are sitting here and you're angry with God. You're angry with God because you say he took away something from your life. He took away somebody you loved. You, he took away the joy in your life. And so you are suffering. You are blaming God for this suffering in your life. God is telling you, I am not here to take away anything. The reason you are going through all this is because you forgot me, God says, but this weekend, these next few days, I want to invite you to come back. Consecrate your life back to me. Build an altar and there. Build an altar and there. Sacrifice. The word altar comes from the Hebrew word mizbah. Mizbah means a place of sacrifice. There is no altar where there is no sacrifice. Every time you go to a Catholic church, in the middle of the church, there will be an altar. And in the altar is the place of sacrifice. Where the sacrifice of Jesus is relived once again. The sacrifice of Jesus 2,000 years ago is relived once again. But friends, today you can make a little altar of that sacrifice. In this altar, in a few moments, Jesus will come. The same Jesus that walked Galilee 2,000 years ago, he will come. And if you put whatever you want to surrender 
on this altar, this mezbah, this place of sacrifice, God will accept your sacrifice. Just as he accepted the sacrifice of Jesus on that altar. But for that, you need to let go. Tell the person sitting next to you, it's time to let go. Why? Because God wants to give you his joy, his peace, his love. There are things in your life that have been holding you down. Look at the life of Jacob. Before he built an altar, his life was surrounded by trouble. Jacob, Genesis chapter 34 verse 30. Jacob said, you have brought trouble into my life. There was so much of trouble in his life. Number two, Jacob's life became stench and terrible smell. A point of offense. Genesis chapter 34 verse 30. Jacob said, you have made me a stench to the people of this town. Number three, Jacob's life was surrounded by enemies. Genesis 34, 30. My enemies have joined forces against me. Number four, J Jacob was afraid of destructions. Genesis 34, 30, Jacob said, my enemies will attack and destroy me. Jacob was going through so much of fear. Why? Because he had forgotten God in his life, friends. Friends, these next three days, God is inviting you. Maybe like Jacob, you are also surrounded by trouble. Like Jacob, you also have become a stench. Your friends have left you, abandoned you, ran away from you, deserted you. Maybe like Jacob, you too are surrounded by enemies, people who are laughing at you in school, in college, wherever you are, people who are mocking you, insulting you, hurting you. Maybe like Jacob, you are living in fear, afraid of destruction. Afraid that somebody is going to try to destroy you. Why is all these things happening, friends? All these things is happening because you have ignored your battle in your life. You have ignored the house of God in your life. God is inviting you. Try to come back. If you come back and rebuild this altar and offer on that altar a pleasing sacrifice to God, God promises five blessings in your life. Five blessings. Number one, when Jacob rebuilt the altar, he came back to Bethel and rebuilt the altar. God gave him a new name. He received a new name. What is the meaning of a new name? God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Think about it. His name was Jacob. His name was changed to Israel. When you come back to God, God changes the destiny in your life. He changes your destiny. You are no more Jacob. You will become the new Israel. The new people of God. You receive a new destiny. Jacob received a new revelation from God. Number two. God said, I am God Almighty, Genesis 35, 11. The word God Almighty translates into El Shaddai. I am the Almighty One. God reveals himself as the most powerful one in your life. Maybe you are seated here and you're struggling with addiction to drugs, struggling with suicidal thoughts, struggling in a relationship that is wrong and you cannot get out abusive relationship and you cannot be free maybe you're struggling with hatred and pain and unforgiveness in your heart and you cannot get out god says the moment you come and you offer yourself to me offer your pain to me i will become for you el shaddai i will become for you god almighty there is nothing impossible for me i will restore everything in your life Say amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. But you need to come back.
Number one, Jacob received a new name. Number two, Jacob received a new revelation of God. Number three, God gave a promise of blessings of increase and fruitfulness. Genesis 35, 11, God told Jacob, I will make you fruitful and multiply. That means from now on, your life will be different. Maybe before this, coming here, you've been failing in your exams. Everything you touch, all the business you touch is going down the drain. All the relationships you are in is going into trouble. Your financial problems are overwhelming you. But God says, if you come back to me, I will bring increase and fruitfulness from your life. Number four, Jacob will receive a new leadership. God promised Genesis 35, 11, kings will come out from your body. Kings will come out from your body. That means that from now on, Jacob's life will be transformed. And number five, Jacob will receive a new inheritance. A promise. The land I gave to Abraham, I now give to you and to your descendants. The inheritance of the promised land becomes the, the prized possession of Jacob. Friends, in order for that to happen, you need to let go. You need to choose. You need to choose to make an altar. So friends, what we want to invite you to do, we want to ask you to take all these burdens and give it to Jesus. Take all this pain and give it to Jesus. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place to streams of grace no deep and Amen.